This is some of the players have mentioned that uh, some of the veterans spoke up in the locker room for the game, and that you did as well. What, what would you say the general message was? We have, we have to be better. I think um, just looking at the defensive side, that again, 74, 70, um, it was you know shoot around um, and. Um, talking about Turner, I thought we did a good job of taking away Turner in that third quarter. Um, I've said this before, you know, when we score the ball, we'll, we'll play both sides of the ball. In that third quarter, we, we kind of went cold. Um, and they kept playing, and that's a credit to Indiana. They, they kind of, you know, played one way, and that's with the pace and putting pressure on you, uh, shooting the three. We got to be able to take the three away. You know, we gave way too many uh, corner threes uh, tonight. Um, these are things that we've worked on. Um, we just got to be able to see it in, in real time. And so these are things that we'll, we'll continue to keep working on. What adjustments can you make defensively? How can you clean things up on that end? Yeah, well, we tried everything. We switched, switched to hit. Um, we went zone. Um, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, look, give them credit. They're, they're, they're one of the best offensive teams in the league. And so uh, for us, it's about the rotations, uh, not giving up the corner three, which we have been here. Um, and so we'll go back, look at the film, and, and see what we can do better. Um, understanding our offense is one of the best in the league, and so if we can uh, expend some of that energy on the defensive end, hopefully that gives us a better chance to get a stop. Do you have the players and the personnel to make these games work? Yeah, we got the we got the personnel, we got the team. Um, this is actually a great test for us, um, you know, to be able to go through a hard time in uh, March um, because it only gets harder in April and May and June. And so, um, this is a great test to to be tested in the sense: Are we going to let go of the rope, or are we going to continue to come to work? Everyone's coming to work. Everyone has the uh, positive. Um, mindset, energy, everyone's trying to do the right thing. Um, right now it's just not falling our way, but we got to continue to keep pushing. we got a game on Thursday, and uh, we'll be better. You, you talked about spending some of the, uh, the offensive energy on the other end. Does, you know, does, does Luca need, need to do that? Does, does Luca need to be better defensively? We all do. We all do. It's, you know, when you look at leaning on Luca offensively, which we do, um, and he delivers, um, we have to be able to cover him and, uh, and, and cover not just Luca, but cover Kai. Uh, and, and the other three that are out there have to protect each other. It's not just one-on-one. -on -one. The, 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 the players are too good in this league to just play one-on-one. -on -one. We have to do as a group, a team defense, we have to guard the ball better. We have to help each other. And then we have to finish the play by rebounding. And uh, we can do this. It's just being, you know, we, we show that signs of it. We just have to be, you know, on the road. We can't just give up the, the threes. We have to be consistent, and we're not being consistent right now. But we do have the guys that can do it. Luca can play defense. Um, but we're asking him to do a lot on the offensive end, too. And so just understanding that, um, it's March. We can fix this, and we, we'll be ready uh, for Thursday. We've got a lot of games left. Um, but the personnel, we can look at different rotations. We can look at different starting lineups. We talked about that uh, before the game. We have options, and we'll, we'll explore those. Are you, asking, are you asking too much of Luca offensively for him to be able to play both ends right now? Are we asking too much? Um, I don't know if we're asking. This is what he does. He's one of the best offensive players on the planet. Um, and, and so this is what he does. And, and so we have to help him on that end. And we have to also help him on the defensive end. This, this isn't a surprise. This has been, you know, he's been doing this pretty much his whole career. Yeah, I, you know, I guess he's got 35 plus point triple doubles his last three games and, and, and you're losing. And I'm just wondering, is it possible for him to have that big of a burden offensively and hold up his end of the bargain on the defensive end? Is it playing, you know, 38, 40, tonight, 43 minutes. Yeah, I mean, he loves the play. He loves the competition. Again, um, offensively, he's one of the best, if not the best in the league. Um, and so now we got to be able to help him there. Um, you know, I thought the pick and roll with Gaffer was great tonight. Um, it wasn't great with Luka. 
Um, so we have options, and we went to the second option, and, and Gafford delivered. And so it's just about being consistent, of being able to do your job. And it's not just one person. It's not just Luca. It's not just Kai. We all have to participate. We're playing ten. Um, if we have to cut this thing down to, to seven, then that's what we have to do. But right now, we're trying to figure out the different combinations that can help us win. Um, and Lucas, again, offensively leads the league in scoring. Um, he's, he's a walking triple double. He's doing everything to help the team win. It's we all have to pitch in and help him. Before the game, you know, you told us that everyone in the locker room trusts what you guys are trying to accomplish, and you mentioned the hold the rope analogy a little while ago. Uh, but you've also told us it's a young team. Do you have a concern level at all about? that trust eroding as results aren't coming? No, it's, the trust is there. Um, we got great guys, great character guys in that locker room. Um, when you look at let go to rope, um, you know, we got a 20 year old who's starting at center. Never seen this before, right? I mean, I know everyone gets excited um, because he did well against Victor, but like there's, you know, 81 more games to be played. And there is a rookie wall. There's a lot of like, he's a he's a young man who's seen the the NBA for the first time, and so there's going to be ups and downs. But that's why we called a team, and that's why you know Gaffer picked him up tonight. You know Maxi has to pick up Gaffer, or Gaffer has to pick up you know Maxi. That's just the beauty of what this is. And so uh, D Live going through the rookie season is having a heck of a rookie season, and he's going to only get better. But he, he could be tired. He's never played this many games or this many minutes. And so I don't even know if he knows what letting go to rope means. And so sometimes being young or being a rookie and being naive, you can use that as a positive. Coach, I know right now is a tough stretch, but do you think this can be a moment where you guys can look back on in a few months and say this was our moment of adversity, that we picked things up and turned things around and got hot towards the end of the season? Yeah, I think it's uh, everything goes through it. Uh, maybe a couple don't, but we're, we're in the midst of it. Um, we still believe that we have the opportunity um, to win. We have the talent um, and the mindset. It's just being able to do it on a consistent basis. And, and that's what every other team is fighting for, is to be consistent. And uh, right now, that's what we're doing. Yes, if we get hot, um, then everybody will, will ask, well, how did this thing turn around? And it's about uh, the group staying together, coming to work every day with a positive attitude and, and, and the energy and, uh, and having fun. And so um, that's one of the things right now, you know, losing isn't fun, you know, winning is. Um, and so, we're, you know, we're all fighting for that. And that's what this time of the year is all about. March, everybody's fighting for position. As the head coach, what are some other things outside of things you just discussed that you feel could be changed or at least enhanced before the next game or even next week? Yeah, I think just the conversation, you know, um, with our group, our, our young group. Um, a lot of times conversation is important because we all can text um, or we can all use Instagram or Twitter. Um, but just the conversation of being able to understand what it means to go through a struggle, uh, to see a family member struggle, how to help. Um, you know, a lot of times uh, we, we don't talk about that, you know, and we just let someone just struggle or, or drown. And so, um, understanding that everyone's not perfect and that this is a team it's not just Luca's team it's just not Kai's team it's the Mavs and so uh, we're all trying to figure this out together um, but at the end of the day this wasn't the last season of the game this is just one of 82 that we can learn from and so uh, to answer your question change yeah there, there'll be change um, there could be a different lineup there could be a different rotation um, but you know, understanding how this group will handle that um, is, is, is big, and hopefully they handle it in a positive way. Coach, through coaching with your time with the Mavs, you've had seasons like 2022-23, or when y'all made the Western Conference Finals, and then last year after the trade deadline, things didn't go as well as you may have hoped. How as you as the coach can you ensure, or try to ensure, that y'all don't fizzle out as y'all did last year? Yeah, you know, I think just, Understand the history, making sure it doesn't repeat itself. Uh, we've talked about that as a group. We've talked about, you know, we're going to be in the playoffs. Uh, we talked about that last year. Um, and that 
didn't quite happen. But we did get D-Live and Omax uh, out of that season. Um, but just understanding that that could happen and that we got to go take it. We can't, there's nothing in this league is going to be given to you. And we got to work and, uh, and do it together. And so the, as a coach, that's what we're talking about. Um, we're showing where we're making our mistakes and, and we're working on it. Now it's just a matter of the players being able to do it when they see it. Coach, are you confident that they're hearing you when you preach any of those messages you talk about? Yeah, I think uh, someone just brought it up that, that, that I talked. Um, you know, as much as a coach talks, the peers have to talk because the respect comes from the peers and, and also from the coach. And so uh, just understanding that, um, you know, the message is, is, is clear and it's positive. Um, no one's panicking um, as much as you guys would like to write that. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's basketball. It's a game that we can learn from, from each other when things are tough and who's in it and who's out. Um, and that's what we're going to see right now. And that's, that's the beauty of what we have when we believe in that locker room. we got great guys that are going to fight. I guess one last interesting thing I wanted to mention was you were obviously a great player. How does that help you for this moment when you're dealing with adversity as a leader, as a coach? How does your background as a great player help you for this? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. Um, being a great player or just a great person or um, a great coach, you just draw from the past. Being able to share with Kai and Luca, you know, um, what it means to be great and what it means to be a leader. Um, and those two are doing it on and off the floor. Um, being able to help uh, the live as a rookie, you're gonna touch the wall. He's human. He's got other things that go on in life that could be bothering him too. But we always are judged um, just on points or minutes or or, or scoring and, and, and just on our rebounds or block shots. Um, but do you really know the person that you're criticizing? You know, and so that for me is about helping these young men be professionals on and off the floor. And, and that's what we have. We got a great group. Um, PJ's playing at a high level for us on defense and offense. When you look at uh, Gafford coming from the Wizards, um, talking about the longest win streak was two, right? And so there's, there's a lot of positive things happening here. As I said earlier, um, Rome wasn't built in a day, 2011 wasn't built in a day. Right, And so um, there's only a few of us in that locker room who have won at the highest level. And so it's, it's for us to help these young men um, get through this tough time. And guess what? It won't be the last time. This, you know, this is D-Live's first year. He's going to play you know, 15 to 20 years in this league. Um, and so he's going to be able to carry that, you know, that torch of being able to lead. I think he's going to be one of the best leaders that the Mavs have had uh, when it's all said and done. Coach, P.J. Washington talked a little bit about the defense and talked about how important effort is for defense. What kind of things do you say to your guys if they're lacking effort on defense or if they're lacking some energy? Um, well, I have a joke. Is that all right if I give you a joke? Can you give me a joke and a real answer? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, it's going to be <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I've told you this, and you guys, for whatever reason, don't listen. Our offense is our defense. Have I not said that? You've said it. Okay. So when we score, we will we will play defense. And I'm half joking, but I'm being also serious. Like when we play, when we put the ball in the basket, we are really good on both ends. The next step, and it's a small step, is when we don't score, can we play defense? It's really simple, right? And so when we watch the game, we're scoring, they're scoring. It's a four-point game. It's anybody's game. When we didn't score, we stopped playing defense. So now the next step is to be able to recognize that and be able to play defense. And so to, to answer your question without the joke or being sarcastic, um, it's just a matter of being able to be unselfish and sacrifice. And once we get to that point, we're going to be really good. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.